Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Kevin with SurvivalistBoards.com. Y'all may ask, Kevin, why do you say that? Why do you say that at the beginning of every video? It gets old. But it, guys, Survivalist Boards is a community. It's not just a website. It's not just me. It is a community of like-minded individuals. It's a forum. If you're worried about the future of our nation, the future of your family, long-term preps, then visit the forum and get involved. It's that easy. Okay, so in this video, let's talk about well-rounded food preps. And what you can do for the long term for prepping for a full collapse, short-term riots, short-term civil unrest. I mean, everything. Okay, so let's just talk, let's talk for a few minutes about different types of foods that you can store and stockpile for you and your family and then some of the long-term preps that you can make. Here we have your basic food groups that's going to be found at any house. You should have these at any, just about any house. You've got your canned foods, you've got your ramen noodles. What's missing are a couple of bags of beans and rice. The, uh, I forgot about them until just now. I've got some other examples over there. So what, um, if there is civil unrest, You've got some rice and stuff. You need to bug in for a little while. This is what you're going to be eating off of. Then you've got your MREs. These are temperature sensitive. Very temperature sensitive. You're not going to store these in an outbuilding or in a shed outside or in a garage and expect them to last for very long. So people that get into prepping, they want to start stockpiling food. What you normally eat, get you some. The MREs is probably some of the absolute worst preps you can make because they are so temperature sensitive. They're heavy, they're bulky, but then again they are a good prep. I have a couple of cases of MREs. I think I've got four or five cases in the closet and I mean whenever I go out on a hiking trip I'll mix and match. I'll pull out the main entree and, and put them in my pack and go out on a hiking trip or camping trip. Here we have a couple of examples of freeze-dried food and number 10 cans. We've got the Mountain House Pouch, and recently I did a video about this, called them seven-year pouches, and I was corrected. Mountain House has extended the life expectancy of these to 30 years. I posted a thread in the forum. Mountain House themselves, a member of the forum, been, have they, they, they've been on the forum for several years, posted a reply that because of their testing, due to their testing, they have extended the life expectancy of pouches to 30 years, just like the cans. You've got your rice and beans stored in Mylar bags. I did these myself. They're dated 2011. I'll probably wait till next year, 2017. I may even do some before that, but open some of these up and do a taste test and see how they're doing. So as of right now, we've got food preps that just about anybody can do. That we've got canned foods, noodles, MREs, stored in a closet, get you a couple of cases, put them in the closet. Number 10 cans, pouches, and how you do, I did a video about these the other day, is that you just add boiling water and they're ready to go. You've got your beans and rice and noodles or whatever else that you've got stored. I will, now we are moving into what I consider the long term prep, say past six months. You eat all your canned goods, you eat all your noodles, you eat MREs, you're close to finishing up your number 10 cans, you're still got some food stored in Mylar bags because you've got your super pails, five gallons of beans and rice and other stuff, oats. I mean, that's a lot of stuff in five gallon buckets. Now you've got your eggs, fresh eggs from the chickens. You've got your garden seeds. I've just pulled these some out, just pulled a few examples out of my stockpile okra, squash zucchini, and Louisiana quick pick purple hull. And I, I like to date my my seeds. So Kevin, what can urban dwellers do for long-term food preps? It, it does not take much. Check into what's called square foot gardening. Come in, plant yourself some fig trees, maybe some pear trees. Just something that grows well in your climate. Some type of good fruit tree. I mean, settlers, yeah, this, tree I just planted it this year. Settlers brought with them stuff like pecan trees, pear trees, 
anything but rock fruit, anything with a, anything besides what has a big a core in it, a big seed like peaches. I would not rely on peaches, even though they're good. Maybe plant a couple of them. But figs, pears, pecans, those are where it's at. Does your town, where you live at, if you live in an urban area, does your town allow, to ha allow you to have some chickens? If so, what kind of chicken? I mean, how many? Can you have two, three, four hens? I mean, hens are not very loud. We've got some Rhode Island Reds, some Bard Rock, Buff Warpington, Australorp, Rhode Island Red, Australorp, the mixture of Rhode Island Red and Australorp, a mixture over there, half uh, Rhode Island Red and something else, or Australorp and Rhode Island, I don't know, it's, it's a mix. Got some guineas, not very well for urban areas, very loud, very, very loud, but a very rich meated animal. It's supposed to be like pheasant, a member of the pheasant family. Supposed to be high in protein. I've got a couple of guinea chicks over there. I'm over here irrigating some of my one of my fig trees. This one here is two years old. It's just not doing very well. But this is the kind of stuff that urban dwellers can do. I mean, you can plant a fig tree. You can plant a, a pear tree. You can plant a pecan tree. And get those long-term food preps going on. I did a video about her, and we're not going to bother her. But I've got a broody hen inside of there. Let's see if we can get a, maybe get a little picture, but she's sticking her head around. Renewable resource, right there. She's sitting on the eggs to hatch them out, taking care of her. The chicks that she passes her genes down. Hopefully, we'll go broody, hatch their chicks out. Hopefully, the ones that after that will go broody. Hatch their chicks out. Slowly replace that flock that you bought from the store that, that, that the hens do not go broody. Butcher them out. Replace them with hens that do go, do go broody. Long-term food prep is right there sitting on those eggs. Think of it this way. Take this table. Just put the Oh, I don't want to move all the, I don't want to move the Mylar bags. Hang on. Let's just put this right there, okay? Put that right there. Short term, long term. Does that make sense? Short term preps, remember MREs are affected by heat. They do not have a real long lifespan to them. Some people, yeah, but I've heard of MREs from Vietnam being good 30, 40 years later. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, all right. Theoretically speaking, MREs have a lifespan. Canned soups, canned whatever, have a lifespan. Lifespan. Short lifespan. We're not talking decades here. 20 to 20, 25 years is what I've heard with good uh, Mylar bags of rice and beans. 20 to 25 years. 25 to 30 years. Forever. Well, besides the 22, that's not renewable. If you could manage your garden, you manage your chicken flock, this is forever. Have a good, being able to water your garden, do your crop rotation, plant crops that you know will not cross-pollinate and produce hybrids. If you know what you're doing here, this could be forever. This could stain you for decades. All right, guys and gals, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Give me some feedback. If you're a member of the forum, please say so. I'd like to hear feedback from the forum members. Hey, Kevin, I like this about your videos. Could you do this a little bit different? And just give me some feedback. All right, guys and gals, and I will talk to y'all later.